1946, the Viet Minh, the predecessors of the Viet Cong, resistance fighters who began digging tunnels and bunkers to combat the French, whom they would eventually defeat. By the time the Vietnam War broke out, the Viet Cong had over 100 miles of tunnels with which to spring deadly ambushes on American and South Vietnamese forces before vanishing. So who were the tunnel rats? What was their mission? And why was it one of the most deadliest jobs during the Vietnam War? Let's try and find out. Hello, I'm Mike Droberg, a Marine Corps veteran, filmmaker, history enthusiast, and investigator of the supernatural. And we will answer these questions on today's episode of Forgotten History. In the early stages of the war against the French colonial forces, the Viet Minh created an extensive underground system of tunnels, which was later expanded and improved upon by the Viet Cong. By the 1960s, the tunnel complexes included hospitals, training areas, storage facilities, headquarters, and barracks. These diverse facilities, coupled with sophisticated ventilation systems, allowed the VC guerrillas to remain hidden underground for months at a time. Numerous spider holes were conveniently located and well camouflaged, nearly impossible to detect. During the Vietnam War, the Tunnel Rat became an unofficial specialty for volunteer combat engineers and infantrymen from the Australian Army, the US Army, and Marines, who cleared and destroyed enemy tunnel complexes. Their motto was a tongue-in-cheek Latin phrase, non gratis anus redentum, not worth a rat's ass. If fighting the well-defended Viet Cong on their home turf wasn't dangerous enough, imagine having to crawl your way through a series of extremely tight and narrow underground tunnels to capture or kill them, often in conditions of close combat. Typically, a tunnel rat was equipped with only a standard issue M1911 pistol or a 1917 revolver, a bayonet, a flashlight, and explosives. Many tunnel rats reportedly came to dislike the intense muzzle blast of the relatively large 45 caliber round, as the 45's loud report could often leave one temporarily deaf when fired in a confined space. Consequently, some preferred to clear tunnels armed with a 38 Special Revolver, equipped with a sound suppressor and other non-standard weapons. Personal weapons were also used by the rats, ranging from 25 caliber automatics to sawn off shotguns. The most dangerous part would be psyching up to get into the tunnel, said Carl Corey, a former 25th Infantry Division tunnel rat. That was the part that was most frightening because you didn't know what you were getting into. It was the brave duty of the tunnel rat to slide alone into the tunnel's entrance, then search for the enemy and other valuable intelligence. Due to the intense and dangerous nature of the job, many tunnel rats became so emotionally desensitized that entering a spider hole was just another day in the office. No big deal. With danger lurking around every corner, the tunnel rat not only had to dodge the various savage booby traps set by the Viet Cong, but the tunnels themselves presented many potential dangers to the tunnel rats. Sometimes they were poorly constructed and they would simply collapse. Tunnels were often booby trapped with hand grenades, anti-personnel mines, and punji sticks. The VC would even use venomous snakes, rats, spiders, scorpions, ants, and other creepy crawlies to pose threats to the tunnel rats. Bats also roosted in the tunnels, although they were generally more of a nuisance than a threat. Tunnel construction occasionally included anti-intruder features such as U-bends that could be flooded quickly to trap and drown the tunnel rat. Sometimes even poisonous gases were used. A tunnel rat might therefore choose to enter the tunnel wearing a gas mask. However, according to U.S. tunnel rat veterans, most tunnel rats usually went without gas masks because wearing one made it even harder to see and hear and even breathe in the narrow, dark passages. Tunnel rats were generally men of smaller stature, around 5 feet 5 inches and under, who were able to maneuver more comfortably in the narrow tunnels. And after completing a search, the unit would rig the tunnels with C4 explosives or bring in the always productive flamethrower. 
In the years since the Vietnam War ended, tunnel rats have suffered from a high percentage of Agent Orange injuries and diseases due to the soldier's exposure to the chemical on the ground or the chemicals that leach from the topsoil into the tunnel environment. While in the tunnels, soldiers were breathing air heavily saturated with Agent Orange. Those men had balls of steel in my opinion. God bless them for their service. Thanks for watching today's episode of Forgotten History. Please like, share, and subscribe. Send us your questions or comments, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Let us know if you have any show ideas. We're always looking for new topics to discuss, and we'd love to hear from you. Thanks again. Until next time.